Sometimes reviews are fun to make and other times they're not. Today's review is one that I think is important to share because I have not seen anyone talk about the things that I found. Although this unit was provided to me by Pecron, I cannot be persuaded in my reviews. If the product underperforms, I have a moral obligation to share that with my audience. Maybe it's a one-off, maybe it's not, but I'm sharing my honest review with you one way or the other. Get ready for a review on the E1000 LFP like no other. We're taking a closer look at the Pecron E1000 LFP power station. On paper, the system looks very appealing. LFP4 cells, decent capacity, strong inverter, plenty of output ports. But in my testing, I discovered things I haven't seen anyone else talking about. And that's something that will most likely leave you frustrated after purchasing this unit and putting it to use. And before we get started, I think it's appropriate to mention that if you're uncertain on which system is right for you, I welcome you to come over to my website, thesolarpit.com. I've created a perfect system recommendation tool for you, quickly helping you narrow down your search with just a couple clicks. Look for the system quiz to get my personal recommendation that is tailored to your needs. I spent tons of time creating this application and I'll continue to update my recommendations as new systems come out. If you need it, it's there. And quickly, I will be giving this unit away to someone in the audience. You may be able to use it if you don't use it to the extreme like I test the unit. So just keep that in mind when you visit the website. Let's jump into my review and share some of the results. Out of the box, you get the E1000 power station, an AC charging cable, a car charging cable, a solar adapter, and the usual paperwork. At first glance, the design looks pretty solid. The case feels rugged and the layout of the ports are pretty straightforward and the power buttons are pretty easy to use. More on that a little bit later. Surprise, it's not as rugged as it appears out of the box. Dimensions come in about 15 by 10 by nine inches, and when I put it on the scale, it weighed in at 30.2 pounds, slightly more than advertised. The E1000 LFP is rated at 1,024 watt hours of battery capacity, and it uses LiPo4 chemistry which should mean increased safety and longer cycle life. It has a pure sine wave inverter, which I did verify produced clean waveforms rated at 1,800 watts of continuous output. More on this in just a bit. That's the part you definitely don't wanna miss. On the front, you get five 120 volt AC outlets, two 100 watt USB-C ports, two 18 watt USB-A ports, a 12 volt car socket, a 20 amp, XT60 port, a five amp barrel connector. And on the left side, you'll find the grounding port, AC input, and the battery expansion port. The covers on these ports don't close as smoothly as they should. And especially the AC input and expansion port covers were a bit of a hassle to get seated properly. The solar input supports up to 600 watts, which is pretty solid. Though if you expand the system to the max 4,096 watt hours of capacity, the 600 watts of solar won't be enough to reliably charge this in a single day. With AC charging, the unit supports up to 1,000 watts of input, which is very fast for the size, but I'll show you a little later that that speed can cause some problems. On paper, the E1000 includes all the protections you expect, over voltage, over current, short circuit, and over temperature. But here is where I run into some real world issues. During the discharge testing, the system overheated so badly it could not complete the full discharge cycle. I tried again at a lower output rate, and while it did finish the test, it becomes so hot that it needed an hour to cool down before it would allow any charging. Eventually, I had to put an external fan on the unit just to help bring down the temperature. So that's definitely not what we wanna see when we're testing a product that is marketed for reliability. Let me be clear, this was tested in a controlled environment at 72 degrees with absolutely no humidity. So this should have been able to complete the continuous discharge test just like every other portable power station that I've tested that I recommend on my channel. This was unable to do that. I could imagine if you had this out in the heat, how much of a negative impact that would cause it. Or if you were charging this or using it as a pass through maybe with an AC outlet or you were using solar at the same time, discharging at 1700, 1750 watts, this is gonna be a disappointment. 
In my usable capacity test, I got 905 watt hours out of the rated 1,024 watt hours of capacity, which translate to around 88% efficiency, which is very good for real life testing. The DC discharge measured in at 883 watt hours, which is also really good for real life testing. But the issue wasn't capacity, it's the heat. Continuous discharge loads made the unit shut down prematurely in multiple tests. Even AC fast charging at 1,000 watts caused significant heat buildup to the point where I'm worried about the longevity of this system. Those tests, some of them were back to back, other ones waited days before running the next test. I made sure to do this as thoroughly as possible and to try to be as fair as possible when completing my test. I want these systems to work properly when I test them so I can recommend them to people because I believe in these portable power stations, but they need to operate correctly. Another problem, even when plugged into the wall, the E1000 doesn't remain 100% state of charge. In an emergency situation, this could mean finding your battery isn't fully topped off when you have it plugged in and the power goes out. Now let's talk about the charging performance. With AC charging, this took 1,087 watt hours of input to fully charge the 1,024 watt hours of battery capacity. That's an efficiency hit, but it's not unusual to see that in this size of a system or a portable power station. Solar charging maxes out at 600 watts, which is fine if you keep the unit to stock capacity, but if you expand it, realistically, you're gonna need more input to charge in one day. And yes, it does support car charging, but it does it pretty slow. Again, the biggest concern here is thermal management. Fast charging for too long risks pushing the unit into overheating. Moving into usability and everyday experience, the layout of the ports are pretty simple and practical. All the ports have protective covers, which generally work well on the front, but on the side covers, the AC input and the expansion battery port covers are a little frustrating to close. The noise during charging and load testing measured in at 47.3 decibels, which is noticeably louder than many competitors in the same class. Now, one odd quirk, even with the unit at 100% state of charge and all the ports turned off, the internal fans continued to run. In my node load test, just having the inverter on with the AC ports activated, it lost 40% of the battery over 24 hours. That's very inefficient compared to its competitors. Do you remember that rugged look straight out of the box that I mentioned back at the beginning of the video? Well, that was debunked rather quickly during testing. I noticed that one of the bottom bumper feet had come off even though the unit was being handled very carefully. That raises some concerns about the overall build durability. And here's the part that makes this review a little bit harder. I was expecting this to perform much better than it did. The Pecron E1000 LFP has specs that look great on paper but in testing, the overheating was consistent and an unavoidable problem. It shut down during continuous discharges and it even come close to overheating in an extended fast charging session. The cooling takes so long, it delays the recharging. And if you're using this and then trying to recharge at the same time, you're gonna be frustrated with it. The noise levels were higher than average and the efficiency during standby or idle use is pretty poor. I wanted this to be a good recommendation, but I can't ignore the results. And you probably already know the answer to this, but is it worth buying? Based on my testing results, I could not recommend this system with any confidence. The overheating issue is a definite deal breaker for me. While we're sitting here, I have done nothing with this while recording this video. These fans are running. I have noise cancelization, so you can't hear that. But if I shut up for just a second and put it to these fans, and if I had my thermal camera with me, I could put the thermal camera on this, and this is kind of warm air running out. Today, we're sitting at 70 degrees with an AC blowing on me currently. We're in this position. So this is no reason why these fans should be on overheating with absolutely nothing going on with this system. So let me just shut up for a second, take my microphone, and put it right here. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but these fans should not be turned on. That is a problem with heating, and that is a reason that I could not recommend this system to you guys. I would just feel bad to say that it may work for some people, 
But if it cannot perform to the level that I would perform for myself, I cannot recommend it. In an emergency situation, the last thing you'd want is a portable power station that shuts down or refuses to recharge because it's too hot. If you're in the market for something reliable in the one kilowatt hour class, there are much stronger options out there that doesn't have these critical flaws. If you want to check that out, I have my full recommendations over on my website that I mentioned earlier in the video. Be sure to go over there, check that out, fill out those questions, and I'll recommend what power station I think is right for you or even full home backup systems, depending on your scenario. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.